it's Robo, and we're back with another episode of Robo Reviews. And on this installment of Robo Reviews, it's a mini update review of not Generation 1, Generation 2, but Generation 3 of Paraz Design's IR nationality flags. Check it out. So, here we have it, the third generation of the Paraz Designs Nationality IR flag patch. Now, this is actually just kind of a mini continuation of a series of reviews that I've done on Peraz's uh, flag patches. If you recall, last year I did a review or a little mini comparison between Generation 2 and the first generation patches that he had put out. So this is just to kind of go over what makes the, uh, these patches kind of worthwhile and with the changes from Gen 2 to Gen 3 and to show you the progression of Gen 1 all the way through Gen 3 here. So with that being said, let's kind of get at it. Now, there's not a lot to say about patches since they are just patches. Now, that's not saying anything negative against any well-designed, well-made patch. It's just that they're not feature-rich. It's just a patch that you put on some loop uh, to help identify either your nationality or morale or unit or what have you. You know, a patch is a patch. That being said, these third generation patches do feature uh, a couple nice little features that make them superior to uh, maybe other patches out there. Now, the first and foremost is the weight content uh, and the, the actual thickness of the patch themselves. Now, Peraz has gone ahead uh, and designed these in such a way that they are the lightest possible. They use the, the least amount of material and they take up the least amount of geometric height, uh, therefore remaining less of a snag hazard in seeing things like brush or, or you know having little ropes catch on them and snagging and ripping off. Now Milan over at Peraz Designs offers uh, these flags in multiple different uh, patterns and color options as well as uh, a few different backing options. This is obviously the IR backed one. He also offers uh, backing such as the Solas uh, material, which is you know visually reflective for daytime use, that sort of thing. Um, so lots of customization, lots of different options. Now in terms of the nationalities, right now I do believe he's only really running Canadian uh, and American uh, by default. I mean, he does do custom work depending on, on the amount that you want to order. So then what makes this patch all that different um, than Generation 2? Well, it's actually ma mainly in one, uh, one major point. So Generation 2 is just as thick, uh, you know, just as light, that sort of thing. Uh, the biggest problem that I, I kind of foresaw, and you'll, you kind of see it happening here in Generation 2, is that uh, the difference is that Milan had chosen to uh, just keep the layers flat. So the Cordura layer laid flat on the reflective or IR backing layer, and then was sewn to the hook layer. Now what that meant was some of the edges started to fray. There's, there's no folding, there's no rounding of, of those corners. So while you know it was a great first, uh, first try, uh, what you saw here is with use, you get some fraying on the edges, which over time can actually cause the, you know, the cordura layer to actually degrade to such a degree that uh, it starts to come out of the stitching. So you'll actually have a problem over time. Now, my use, Milsim use, I mean, it's not day, day, day use it's not uh, you know constant 365 days so you know mine have sort of stood up to the test of time while still accumulating some of that fraying uh, if you were an actively deployed person this might change dramatically so the big improvement over generation two to generation three is the fact that uh, milan went back to using a folded edge uh, so he actually folded the cordura edge uh, underneath the actual backing and then sewed it. Uh, now this didn't really add any sort of thickness to the patch at all, so huge thumbs up, while it did give the benefit of the added kind of abrasion resistance uh, that having you know the ends of the fabric hidden uh, kind of provides. So uh, it was the perfect move to make. I think it was the only thing that he actually could have done to make this patch any better, more durable, more functional, uh, more valuable uh, to the end consumer. So that's the huge change there. Thumbs up Milan for, for kind of rethinking that. Now, where does this idea come from? Well, in generation one, Milan had also done folded corners, and I think that's where the unfolded corners of Generation 2 came from, was Generation 1's folded corners were actually done in such a way that it changed the overall thickness of the patch to, uh, you know, in a joking fashion, to almost ridiculous proportions. And what I mean by that is, 
So here's a generation one patch. Here's the thickness of generation one patch. And that's mostly because the corner thickness uh, was so high in density that overall the entire patch was just that much thicker. Uh, again, not a huge issue. I mean, it, you know, it's still a really well-made patch really nice uh, laser cut lines uh, in terms of the nationality and the actual fabric itself. Uh, this is the Solas material, by the way. Um, but at the end of the day, it was just that much thicker. I mean, you know, it does at, at certain points uh, become a snag hazard. You, know, you got this on a helmet, you go through some brush, the brush can easily start to snag on that and start of pulling either your helmet askew or the patch off. So it's just like one of those things, like after generation one, he kind of learned his lessons. Like, okay, so I like the durability. Uh, or, you know, at least I like the, the function or the, the design of the patch. I don't like the thickness. So then we come out with generation two. Okay, screw that, that corner roundness thing. I'm, I'm maybe a little bit gun shy of the corner roundness thing. So uh, let's not do that this time and let's make this uber thin patch. Perfect, awesome. Oh shit, got some fraying though. Well, I guess that sort of doesn't work. Well, what if I kind of maybe do something where it's like a mix of those two things? Oh, look at that, perfect patch. Well, there we go. Awesome. So you can see the whole thought pattern, the, the going back to the drawing board, as they say, when it comes to uh, engineering good ideas. Uh, and that's actually a good point to make. Good ideas don't come just from thin air. They come through trial and error, uh, generally. Uh, so it's, it's good to see someone like Milan going back to the drawing board based on his professional and casual customers uh, who have provided him feedback on this. So. Just wanted to kind of quickly update you on the, the new patches. You can find these at parazdesigns.com. Uh, I'll put that link in the description below for you to kind of go check out. I highly recommend you pick up a lot of his patches. Paraz Designs is actually the exclusive patch maker uh, when it comes to my nationality patches in most cases. Uh, now my morale patches are, are generally a different story just because I get them from everywhere. But in terms of my, uh, my nationality patches, uh, Milan at uh, Paraz Designs is, has graciously kind of hooked me up in a lot of cases uh, with just great patch products. So big thumbs up to him, uh, big thumbs up to his company. And uh, if you're looking for nationality patches or other laser cut IR backed or Solas backed patches, do check out his website. As I said, uh, link is in the description below. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this little mini update review of the Paraz Design IR nationality flags. Like I said in the review, the changes weren't massive. They weren't big stretches. They were just the right changes to make the product even better. Uh, if you're interested in looking for nationality flags, I can't suggest a better product than the Paraz Designs ones. Please do check out his website uh, in the description below. Highly recommend those products. Now in terms of coming down the pipelines, I definitely have a ton more reviews coming on the way. For example, my Ronin Tactics Shenshi belt and my Lalo Tactical Athletic shoes, to name a few. In terms of gameplay, I will soon be going to American Milsim's Rebel Yell 3 and a few weeks later going to Faded Giant 4. So you better believe I'm going to be there with my GoPro on collecting a ton more uh, first person footage for you guys to enjoy. So as you can see, both reviews and new gameplay should be coming down the pipes for you to enjoy real, real soon. Now taking a quick second to thank my two most awesome sponsors being Enola Gay Smoke Grenades and Red Wolf Airsoft. Now both of these companies provide me support in ways, allow me to do more airsoft, but more importantly bring you guys more gameplay, more reviews, and more philosophies to enjoy and learn from. So huge thumbs up to both of those companies and their support. Please do check out their websites. They're linked in the description below. So whether you did or didn't like this video, I kinda wanna know about it. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. I love the conversation and the feedback. If you could do me a huge solid, that is like, subscribe, and share with all your friends. Keeps me happy in this YouTube game. Until next time, guys, keep having fun playing Airsoft, being good community members, film we love. Later, guys.